Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Sam in Tarapi Tuck, uh, back with you uh, with another video on another uh, unit that I've got here behind me um, in the racks. So this time we're going to have a look at the DBX 165A, which is a uh, vintage unit. It's a compressor um, and it's one of my favorites, uh, especially on bass and kick and snare. So yeah, let's have a look and listen. All right, guys. So we are uh, um, we well we've got uh, Pro Tools session open here. Um, it's the same song from last time. Maybe you've seen the last video that I did on the uh, UA eleven seventy six uh, blackface. So it's a song um, sung by yours truly <laughs> um, for a company called uh, CBF Farm Pharmaceutical Company. Anyway. So here it is. We're going to go through pretty much the same uh, sets of the same set of sounds: uh, kick, snare, bass, maybe acoustic guitar, um, and vocal. See what this compressor can do. All right, let's go with the kick first. So we've got the sampled kick here, the trigger. Um, and, uh, Actually, if you see here, the sample is called CLA Kick, but it's actually not from this, you know, not the exact sample from Crystal or Algae, but something that I found that was similar, so I just named it that way. Um, anyway, so we've got it fed out to my console here, the SSL um, uh, AWS 924 Delta on channel 3, and we've got that, the insert point patched to the DBX 165A compressor. And what I'm going to do, basically, I'm going to play you the bypass signal and then put the compressor in. And then I'm going to play around with it um, a little bit and also play around with the EQ on the console here. Uh, just to get, really get, you know, give you a really, a real world uh, sort of situation, how I would go about um, using it, the compressor. You know, uh, you, know you can't, uh, obviously you, you would EQ the kick drum as well as compress it. So. Yeah, and then I'll play the kick drum, the process kick drum with the song and I'll turn the processing off as well and I'll go back and forth with, um, for you guys to, to check out and see um, how it works or how it helps the kick drum to kind of poke out or stand out or um, uh, work well in the mix situation. So here we go. This is bypass uh, processing. I'll try and bypass it over here on the, on the unit here so you can see. So as you can tell, it really gives the kick a, like a real knock and snap as well. So this really works well with the, with the drums, especially. Um, so the setting I've got at the moment uh, is that uh, I'm compressing about nine or ten dB, and I've got the setting as auto attack and release um, and compression. Pretty much ratio, I guess, about four to one, four, four or five to one. Um, but I'll start playing with the attack and release in a bit. Yeah, you get that really sort of in your face modern kick sound, which could really work well in a rock or metal mix.
you do lose a bit of low end. So I'll try and um, add that low end back into the kick with um, some EQ here on the console. Yep, so what I've done here on the EQ, um, sorry you can't see it, wait, maybe I'll get um, my phone out and use it <laughs> as a second camera, one sec. So here as you can see on channel 3 here, um, I've got the insert button in, so it's engaged, the compressor's in the loop, um, and I've Adding around 4, 50, 50 hertz, or maybe 49, or about 50 hertz uh, on shelf. And um, adding about, just a little bit, tiny bit. And I'm cutting here at about 400 or 500. Um, a couple of dBs on a pretty narrow cue. And that's about it for now. And I'll put the song in, the whole song, the mix, and I'll see what else I'll do with the EQ. So yeah, what I've done here um, is that I've added a little bit of uh, the sheen at the very top. So I'm going really up high up here to about 22K as you can see here on the console. But really what I'm after is the curve, the shelf curve that it makes. Say your point, the EQ point is 22K, but then it sort of comes back down, you know, towards... Um, you know, the rest of it until even 4K or 3K is being lifted up a bit. So, um, so a couple of dBs of that really helps the kick to cut through the mix. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to play the kick with the processing on and off uh, within the mix. So you can see the difference between before and after. So here we go. I just take the processing off, EQ and insert. So there you go. Love that compressor. Anyway, so let's move on to our snare drum. I put a bit of processing back um, in the plugins here on the kick uh, the kick channel, and I'll take some off of the snare, and I'll route things back to the way they were with the kick drum here, and the snare out into channel three on the mixer. This is a sampled snare as well. It's a bunch of slate snares here. Some, so some room as well. Some room sounds. Uh, room uh, snare room. Let's just check it out. Um, 
without the EQ and a compressor. Maybe I'll go with just one sample for now, just to give you a more sort of, I don't know, more real world, I guess, uh, without adding any ambience because that's sort of, some would consider that cheating, <laughs> but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to make the song work. But for, in this case, I'll just go with one snare sample, one dry snare sample. Okay, cool. Let's have a go at it. Compressor in. Wow, that really gives the snare like real, real attack. Um, really gives the attack to the snare um, with pretty much the same similar setting to the kick. Uh, fast release, uh, slow attack, and less ratio, rest, less compression, and less um, overall compression. I'm gonna lower the uh, threshold a bit, um, and uh, I try to match the gain here, so there's no jump in level. Um, between um, bypass and you know, in. So here we go again. Bypass. In. Again, you do lose a bit of that low end, um, but if you've got something that's like bass heavy, that compressor would be perfect for it because it really actually cleans it up a little bit in, you know, in the low end. So, I'll play the song and I'll have the compressor in and out so you can hear the difference. So that's without compression. Yeah, now you get that snap. Now the next thing that I would do is that I would add some low end as well. First, I would do some roll off. I'll put a high pass filter in there just to get rid of any unwanted rumble in the snare, even though the DBX compressor has gotten rid of a lot of the low end. So I'll do a bit and I'll add some low end in there. I'll play, I'll play it with the song and I'll play around with the EQ. Sorry about the camera movement here. I'm holding it. I'm using my right hand holding the uh, the phone and my left hand doing the EQ. So forgive me. So now I'll take the EQ in and out with the compression in. So what I did there to the snare is pretty simple. Just added a bunch of low end there uh, at around 150 on shelf and a roll off at about 60 hertz. Yep. So there you go. And then you have your snare sound. 
Um, let's move on to maybe bass and we go vocal. Got three bass tracks here. I'll just go with the DI. Mute everything else. Put, and bypass any processing here. Router to channel three on the SSL. And let's have a listen to it. It's without any processing here. Right. What I'll do is that I'll press the uh, insert button here on the console, just leave that in and I'll play around with the bypass on the unit so you can see it. So I'll have it bypassed for now. Actually with the bass, it actually adds or brings up the bottom end of the bass and makes it really tight. So it brings up the low level uh, bottom end, uh, low frequencies in the bass and it actually, actually makes the bass or the low frequencies of the bass more evident. So kind of the opposite effect of what it gave on the drums. But I'll play around with the settings. Um, It also adds this sharpness to the bass, like around uh, 2, 3 or 4K. It really gives like the, the notes like definition in the bass. Um, let's see. So that's an auto attack and release and compression ratio is about 6. And I've basically uh, gave it more more compression just made it lower the threshold um, so it compresses more it's about minus 10 minus 11 um, so yeah we'll come back here on the console and see what what the before and after is all right so this is before with the mix Start again. That's it, that's, that's my bass sound. Cool. 
cool. All right, let's go to uh, vocal. Just to keep this video short. <laughs> um, send that out to three. Bypass processing. Put the bass back to the internal mix bus in the box. Perhaps I'll bring the other bass tracks in. Alright, so now we've got the vocal through, I'll bypass everything here on the channel. And let's just hear that. Just to and again, I'll bypass on the unit here, I'll keep the insert on the SSL in. ก็จะไปจะไปทั้งที่ที่ฝันเอาไว้ความหวังคือความสุขภาษาพร้อมกันก้าวเดินไปทางหน้าซีบีเอฟพวกเฮาจะพบกันที่เซนไซ Leoบังไปจนสุดสายตาก็จะไปจะไปทั้งที่ที่ฝันเอาไว้ความหวังคือความสุขภาษาพร้อมกันก้าวเดินไปทางหน้าซีบีเอฟพวกเฮาจะพ
Yep, there you go. And it really brings the vocal forward in the mix, you know, but it won't, it's not my go-to vocal compressor at all. So I'm just basically showing you um, what it really, uh, what it would be, you know, uh, having the, uh, the, the vocal going through the unit, which is not the, which, which is not what I would do. But anyway, so that, that's, um, that, that's it. That's the DBX165A. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, I'll see you later. So yeah, that was the DBX165A. I hope you liked the um, sound samples that I had going through the unit. And if you've got any question on the unit or anything that you want to suggest on uh, what our channel should bring um, forth to you, then please leave a comment. And also please follow us, uh, subscribe and leave us a like uh, and comment if you like this video. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. More goodies to come. See ya.